I, I just wanted to know what was it like working with Sarah? Oh, it was great. I mean, I knew Sarah from back in New York. We had known each other through auditioning and stuff. And um, God, I mean, she's a lot younger than me. Um, and I was really always impressed with her work ethic, um, being so young and being, I mean, I, I, what was she, like 19 when she started Buffy or 18, something like that? And I mean, she worked her ass off and never complained and was very focused and dedicated and also very gracious. So. Um, she uh, she really was amazing, and, and I have so much respect for her, especially at that age, because when I was 19, I could barely get to class. <laughs> <laughs> so I was impressed by her work ethic. Thank you. Hi there, I have a two-part question. Okay. First oh, question. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> at the end of season four in Dexter, Yes, you're what happened? You're what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody tell me. <laughs> was the mutual agreement? Was it no. No. You want to try different work? Or? No. No. <laughs> no. I, I can't t name one actor that would want to be taken off a show like that. No, it was not my choice. Um, however, and they told me an hour before they put out the script. And... Um, and that's, that's the nature of the business. I mean, I know it sounds shocking, but um, you know they have to renew your contract every year. So um, there's no such thing as job security in television. Um, and so you know your job as an actor is to um, bring a storyline to life and to do what the writers ask of you. And you don't have any ownership over the character or the story, unless you're a producer. <laughs> But when you're just, you know, what I call a hired gun, um, you know, my job is to bring a storyline to life. So, you know, they, they let me know beforehand, an hour beforehand. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I, I, you know, in many ways, it, it, it was, thank God I didn't have too much time to think about it um, until after. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it was not by my, I, I wasn't requesting to be off the show. At it by any means. I loved playing Rita. I loved working with Michael C. Hall and Jennifer Carpenter and I loved um, I loved the producers and the writers and you know we were very much a family. It just was they wanted a shocking ending. They wanted something to change the game. And yeah. unfortunately Rita's the only one you could have killed aside from Dexter that really would have changed the game. <laughs> if you killed Dexter then what? <laughs> so. The second question is uh, what was the experience like working with Sasquatch Tom and Rambo? Oh, it was awesome. It was really awesome. Um, you know, uh, we filmed in Thailand in the northern jungles of Thailand, so that alone was an amazing experience. But um, I mean, he's such an iconic figure, and and to be a part of that franchise, and to be the only girl that actually survives at the end of a Rambo movie. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they never do another one again. You know, I want to wear that title, being the only woman to survive. I think there was a woman in Rambo 2 who got killed as soon as she said, take me with you. And then she got like an arrow or something. <laughs> Dead. Um, sorry. <laughs> but it was an amazing experience. He wrote and directed the film as well. And he is... He's brilliant. Uh, he's, a, he, he's a brilliant filmmaker. Um, and... I really understood why he is who he is. I mean, his dedication to his work, he's the most dedicated person on set, 150%. And he helped me raise the bar on my game. You know, when I saw that, it takes that kind of commitment and that level of commitment to be a star. Um, it, it really makes you realize how hard you have to work. And um, I mean, he was in there digging in pig shit and, doing all sorts of crap. I mean, he just, and things that you wouldn't even think that Stallone would do, he was doing. <laughs> it was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. I just want to know, um, when you were cast as Rita on Dexter, did you, like, did you know anything about the show beforehand? And, like, what was your reaction that it was like, oh, this is a show that everybody roots for a serial killer? Well, <laughs> that was kind of bizarre. Um, imagine that pitch. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I actually, um, they sent me the script, and I love the script so much. Um, and in the very beginning, I was actually auditioning. They didn't know where I fit in the beginning, so I was auditioning for Rita and for Deborah. And, um, 
And I really thought I was Deborah because I just wanted to swear. <laughs> I was tired of playing. Still like, be on the show. Too. Yeah, I know, right? To like swear on television to me was like the coolest thing. Um, but as soon as I walked into the room, they took one look at me and they went, "Oh my God, you're our Rita." And I was like, "Oh, okay." I'll take Rita. I'm like, I'll do craft services even just to be part of the show. Uh, what really appealed to me about the script was that it was the kind of programming that I like to watch. Um, it's provocative, it's, uh, it, it asks questions, it doesn't feed you any answers, and it really makes you kind of grapple with your own moral code. I mean, it is that weird thing where you find yourself rooting for the serial killer, but he's a serial killer. So you, it, you're in that constant questioning of is, you know, what he's doing right, is it wrong? Why do I feel so compelled, like why do I feel this emotion for him, and yet he's killing, I mean, he's and he's not just killing, like, you know, gunshot to the head. I mean, he's torturing, he's maiming, he's chopping them up, throwing them into the ocean. <laughs> I mean, he's not nice. But, but you find this, you have this love for him. And I think that's what's so compelling about the show and why it is Dexter. I know myself, it took me a couple episodes to get over the initial right. thing just to get used to it. And now I love the show. I mean, it's sickening as that sounds, but I, I love the show. <laughs> but it's, it's really um, groundbreaking and provocative. And it's why it's on you know cable channels. You can't do that kind of show on a major network. It just won't work. Um, and it's 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 great. It's like watching. It's like being in it is like being in a feature film every every week. It's how it felt. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. 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 Um, I just wondered, when you were on set with John Lithgow, were you scared out of your mind? <laughs> you know, when I see him now in anything, I get goosebumps. <laughs> no, he's been lovely, actually. Um, I mean, you got to remember, I didn't know I was going to die, so okay. I figured as long as I didn't have any scenes with him, I was safe. <laughs> Little did I realize. Yeah. <laughs> You don't have to have scenes with him to actually be killed by him. <laughs> so. Imagine just a sweet guy until he, you know, cameras are rolling. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I never really worked with him, so I wasn't there on set on the days he was working. I mean, I would see him at the table reads, and he was definitely had a level of creepiness at the table read, but he was also very sweet. I mean, just he's a wonderful, wonderful man and, and a wonderful actor. And I think he's on How I Met Your Mother right now, so, you know. Thank you. Hello. Hi. How did you prepare? I, I mean, you, I know you said you didn't have much time to prepare for your final scene as Rita, but how do you get into that mind space and the physical space in order to pull off such a, a poignant performance? All I had to do was lie in a bathtub of blood dead. A lot of alcohol. <laughs> No, um, you know, the hardest part for me was I knew that we had 10 days left of shooting, so I knew before everybody else. I knew in those final 10 days what was happening. The crew didn't know, and I wasn't allowed to tell anybody. So um, it was hard filming that last episode, just going to work. I would have moments where I'd sit at home <laughs> going, you know, it was just hard. The idea that I wasn't going to be playing Rita anymore was just, it was hard for me. I loved her so much, and um, you know, a lot of tears, a lot of alcohol, um, a lot of laughs. Um, for the final scene, um, they only told the crew on an hour before we went to shoot it, and that was very difficult because I've been with the crew for five years at that point, and um, you know, you're watching like the big burly grips and even transpo crying. You know, they can believe it, and um, and so I tried to have fun with it. My, I have a, 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 my boyfriend has a really wonderful sense of humor, and he came to set and decorated my trailer like a morgue. <laughs> <laughs> and he brought a tombstone that said, rest in peace, like one of those styrofoam tombstones. And so I took it and floated it in the tub. <laughs> I was trying to have fun um, and, and, and make it not so like a final goodbye, but like, you know, because it was a great four years, and I wanted to celebrate that. Um, but it was hard. I mean, I'd have scenes with Michael where I'd look at him and just burst into tears for no reason because I knew, like, this was it. <laughs> and everyone would look at me like I was nuts. <laughs> but once it came out, why? Then everyone understood why I was so upset the last episode. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Now it's going to hit the internet, all of that, isn't it? <laughs>